this afternoon, I was listening on YouTube. Pal had a town hall Q&A with a bunch of students and teachers. And he was there on Zoom uh, answering questions. And I want to talk about some of the comments he made. In fact, one of the comments relates to something I just said. Pal went out of his way to praise Congress for having the foresight to have passed the CARES Act. And the reason that Powell so admired Congress for what they did was because he said that Congress was able to replace the income that people lost due to the pandemic, right? Because a lot of people couldn't work. They were locked down at home. Their businesses were closed. And so they weren't making any money anymore. And so Congress replaced their lost incomes. And according to Powell, This was a good thing. And of course, in many cases, they didn't just replace their lost income, they augmented it. A lot of people were getting more money not working than when they earned money for working, right? And that just compounded the problem. But what Powell doesn't seem to understand is the point I just made earlier, that Congress was able to replace the income that people lost but it wasn't able to replace the productivity that was lost. In other words, when people aren't on the job working, they're not producing. And the government doesn't replace that lost production. All it replaced was the income. But income is supposed to be tied to production. You help produce goods and services, and in reward, you get money, and now you can use that money to consume the goods and services that you produced. I mean, maybe not the identical goods and services, but when you're working, you're helping to fill up a bag with goods and services. And then you get paid, and now you have the right to reach into that bag and grab some of the goods and services that you helped produce. But when all these people didn't go to work, they stopped putting stuff into the bag. But now the government gives them all this money so they can reach into the bag and grab stuff anyway. But if no one is putting stuff into the bag and everybody is reaching into the bag to grab stuff, they're going to end up empty handed. And that's what's going on. Prices are going up and Pal doesn't understand the difference between replacing the money and replacing the productivity. It's the stuff. It's the things that are produced that we need. What the proper monetary policy would have been. And again, I said this from the very beginning, when people are not producing, and you're not getting the goods and services provided in the economy, the Fed needs to withdraw money from circulation. It needs the money supply to shrink alongside the supply of goods to maintain prices. If you increase the supply of money while you're simultaneously decreasing the supply of goods, prices are going to soar, which is exactly what we're experiencing right now. So we should not be praising Congress for doing the wrong thing. They should be condemned, as should the Federal Reserve, for being complicit in this activity. And I think also, if Americans felt the pain more directly of a lot of the actions that were taken with respect to the lockdown, then the public would have opposed these policies and maybe they wouldn't have been enacted. I mean, one of the main reasons the government was able to get away with telling everybody they couldn't go to work was by saying, oh, by the way, we're going to pay you anyway. We're going to send you a check or we're going to send you more than you were making when you went to work. And then people were like, okay. But if the government said, look, nobody can go to work. Everybody's got to stay home. But you know, you're going to lose your income and deal with it. The public wouldn't have been willing to accept the lockdown. So the government was able to sugarcoat it by claiming that they're going to replace everybody's lost paychecks. But of course, they didn't replace any of the lost productivity. And so prices are going up. If we really were going to ask the American public to sacrifice, and if you remember, you know, again, Donald Trump, when this first happened, he was talking about World War II, saying Americans have to sacrifice. Okay, Americans actually sacrificed in World War II. You know, if you had a business and your sales really went down because your customers were off fighting the war, right? You didn't get bailed out by the government, even if your business closed because you didn't have enough customers because everybody was fighting the war. Or a lot of times during the war, so much of the supplies were being used for military production, there was a lot of shortages or a lot of stuff that businesses couldn't even sell, 
even though customers wanted to buy the stuff, the stuff didn't even exist because the resources to make it were being used for the military. In fact, there was a lot of things that were being rationed during the war. So a lot of people sacrificed, but they weren't getting checks from the U.S. government. Trump didn't ask anyone to sacrifice. He said, hey, stay at home and we'll send you a check. If your business is suffering, don't worry. Get a PPP loan, forgivable loan. We'll give you some money. That was not the proper policy response to an emergency. If we really had a pandemic, if we really had a health crisis, then obviously people need to bear the financial consequences of that crisis. I mean, it's not a good thing, but it's reality. But what the government did is try to pretend that nobody actually had to suffer because the government can make everybody's pain go away simply by printing money. Well, they didn't make the pain go away. They actually exacerbated the pain. They just kicked the pain down the road a bit. And so now we're finally starting to catch up with that pain. The Peter Schiff Show. 